The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 15th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that early and send it off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's down by 257, about seven tenths, seven tenths for the S&P or 33, six tenths for the NASDAQ 100 or 100 points, eight tenths for the Russell. That's a 15 point move, a little less than 1% for the semis, a 33 point move there. Tranny's down a little over 1%, 188 points to the downside. Gold is off $3, with silver being down two cents. Light sweet crude is off a buck 47. Natural gas is down 13 cents. The 30 Treasury is off eight ticks. Printed out at 124. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got NVIDIA up seven bucks. Alta Beauty's up four, that's about one percent in uh, uh, for Alta. Amgen's up four bucks, one and six tenths percent. Insulin Corp about a half, one and a half percent, three bucks there. Novo Nordisk up three bucks, 1.76 percent there. The leader to the downside in the clubhouse is Alta Source Asset Manager down 22 bucks, 67 percent move. Doesn't sound like they've done a great job managing assets. C Limited ADS is down 15 bucks, that's a 28 percent move. BlackRock down two percent, 14 bucks for solar off five and a half percent, or nearly 12 bucks. And Broadcom down one and three percent, one and three tenths percent. That's off 11 dollar roonies out there. So let's begin. Let's begin. Let's begin where. Let's begin. Let's begin by going over to the white background charts. Uh, oh, I tell you where we're going to. Yeah, let's go. Um, now, let's begin by taking a look at uh, gold. Now, let's take a look at the let's take a look at the components, three of the components of the U.S. dollar index. That's where we're going to begin the day here. So let's start off there. So here we've got the euro U.S. dollar. We're looking at the daily time frame out there. What we can see here is that yesterday price negated a, uh, a buy the D point bottom that formed here back on the Three River Morning Star. That was basically around August the third. Price closed below that pattern, negated it. However, today if we get another bullish reversal candle, you don't see the chart. Boy, you should see the chart. That's weird. Thank you. I'll do that again. Let's change windows one more time. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Screens. Why didn't that change? That's wild. Okay, so now you should see the euro. You got the daily time frame. At present, it doesn't really matter what's at present, but at least it shows you where we're at. At present, we've got a bullish piercing candle. If we get a bullish reversal candle today, piercing candle, bearish engulfing, whatever it might be, then it would confirm another buy the D point pattern. If that unfolds, just like the last buy the D point pattern, price will go target that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1.09. So you could get, and this is 51%, 52% of the US dollar index. If we get that turn here in the Euro, regardless of the patterns in the US dollar index, we're likely to see a top in the US dollar. But that's just the Euro. So the Euro has got a potential for a bottom today. You wanna to pay attention to that. Let's look at the next currency out 
here from a weighting standpoint. Well, it wasn't really the Great British Pound, but let's take a look at it anyways. The Great British Pound formed a buy the D point pattern when it formed this bullish engulfing candle back here on August the 4th. Now, what price did last night or what did yesterday was it tested and rejected that uh, bottom out there. So this buy the D point pattern remains in effect. You know the old saying, if you can't bust them to the downside, price is going to bust them to the upside. So the pound right now is putting weakness in the dollar as it approaches its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1.27. What I can share with you, if price closes above that, the Great British Pound will rally further against the U.S. dollar. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, I should have that chart. Here we go. The Japanese yen needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point pattern. Now, we may or may not get that today, but if we do, then that will have a top. That will tell us that the U.S. dollar index is going to weaken. So it's these, I, I can take into the U.S. dollar index charts, which I will. The only chart that I can take you to, and if you listened to my segment with uh, Tom yesterday, this, this is already information that you already know, but I don't have a daily topping pattern out there. Does that matter? It really doesn't. And the reason that it doesn't because the underlying instruments are the ones that are going to really control what's going on. We just took a look at the yen, the Great British Pound, and the uh and the euro out there, they represent 83% of the weighting. That is all we really need to take a look at out here. So watch the, uh, you know, you're going to watch the, the yen. The, the Great British Pound already is telling you it's headed higher. The yen uh, could be telling us it's getting ready to move lower. We want to see that bearish reversal candle. And the euro just depends on the uh, candle at the day's, at day's end out there. So I'll switch back to the other charts just so we can finish off the uh, dollar. Uh, and we'll take a look at actually the U.S. dollar index. And the only chart here that helped me identify that there was a, a potential top, even though the daily said not so fast out here. And that was this. We're looking at the upper. Now, we're just going to look at the chart itself. I'm going to simply expand it out. And this is the weekly time frame chart for the U.S. dollar index. And what we can see is a very clear delineated uh, declining tops pattern with price trading into its bearish structured profile zone. That zone is between 102.54 and 103.49. So only if the U.S. dollar index were to close above 103.49, would that be signaling to you and I that it's getting ready to break out? But that's not what we're seeing when we take a look at the euro, the yen, and the pound out here. So it does make sense that we see the uh, U.S. dollar turn down. Where does it head to? Well, look at it from a profile standpoint and a trend line standpoint right now, I'd say that would be the lower end of the target should we get those turns in the other currency pairs. So that was a good place to start. The reason that was a good place to start is because at some point in time, somebody might say, well, Stevie, what about those TD9 count bottoms inside of gold and silver? They're there. Does it need a U.S. dollar index to turn down? Not necessarily, but would it be helpful? Most likely it would be helpful out there. But those are two patterns that are in place, and those patterns remain in effect unless gold calls it below 1934.20 and silver below 22.41 and price there should continue to move higher. Okay, good. We, flip, we flipped the charts. We're doing good. Hey, as long as we're here, we can take a look at uh, natural gas here. Natural gas just struggling at the top of that weekly profile. We got one daily close above that area. That was back on August the 9th. We're, you know, we're, it's a real key resistance zone. That, by the way, that is up at $2.85. Now we're likely to see price pull back into the 251, 256 level. Lights we crude, you can see right now, it's testing key support. That key support is 81.17. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at Carvana for John C. and the grain for Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, up, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Carvana, CVNA is the ticker symbol. This is for John C. inside the Tiger's Den. So, John, the one thing that we know, so this has a TD9 count top, so we can see that. And uh, the last uh, three trading sessions, price has tried to get back inside its profile. It's been unable to do that. In order to do that, price would need to close above 4106. So with price below the bottom of the profile, maybe what this is going to go do is form a TD9 count bottom. Now, in order to do that today, Price needs to close below bar number four. So that first thing is going to be a close below 41.44 today. And tomorrow you would also need to see a close below 39.46. On top of that, you've got to see a spike below bar number six. That low is 38.20. If all, if all of that unfolds between today, tomorrow, and uh, Thursday out there, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then you'll have a TD9 count bottom. Now, the B point for an A to B equals CD was back here on July 27th. Volume there was 16.8 million shares. When it was passed, it was with 14 million shares, lighter volume. So it set up an A to B equals CD, but right now we're back uh, kind of above the, uh, well, we're not really above the B point just yet. So it's also possible if this doesn't go on to form a TD9 count bottom, like it did a TD9 count top, then maybe it's the A to B equals CD pattern that is out there. It doesn't have that much further to go to at least get to the one-to-one -one area, which looks like it's about the 3590-ish type area. Uh, range. If price does do that, John, then what you're looking for is you're looking then for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Gartley buy pattern. The weekly chart looks bullish. There's no topping signal that I see. Well, let me just pull this back a little further in case there's an A to B equals CD pattern. And there's not one that I see that sticks out at me, at least that's worthwhile for us to look at. Price remains above its green oscillator and change line and above the top of its uh, bear, the profile actually formed below price. That's a bullish message out here for Carvana. So at this stage, it's really about the daily trying to find a bottom. It's below profile, so we can't say that's a bottom. And I'd watch for either a TD9 count or a A to B or CD pattern. Uh, out there. So I hope that helps you out, John C., with regard to CVNA. Mr. Bill, inside the Tiger's Den, he wanted to take a look at the grain. So, Mr. Bill, what I need to do for that is we're going to switch over and take a look at my newsletter, actually. So each morning, newsletter subscribers, uh, you'll see in a moment, I cover... I cover the soft commodities, or I cover most of the soft commodities. Those soft commodities that I cover each day, wheat, 
beans, corn, co uh, coffee, sugar, and uh, cocoa out there. So that's what we're showing on my screen out here. I need a different data feed to generate these charts, and that's in. Uh, I don't want to close everything down that I've got open in order to do that. We can just come back here. Now, the reason to come back here, Mr. Bill, and we'll go take a look at the other charts as well. First, we take a look at wheat out here. You're welcome, John. We take a look at wheat. It's I don't know if it's trading below 607 right now or not, but that's its TD9 count breakout level. It was tested and rejected yesterday. Sometimes getting back to a breakout level can be a bottom. Is there a daily bottoming pattern? No, there is not out here. But you got price trading into a bottoming pattern. That was at Rogeman Dominicator bottom back here in the May time frame. Um, with regard to soybeans, soybeans – I have a uh, um, are just simply right now. I believe they are consolidating with inside their daily profile. I do not have a bottom pattern. Instead, I've got an A to B equals CD to the downside, um, but that hasn't taken hold just yet. With regard to corn, uh, it's testing its breakout level of 474. The thing with corn is if it closes below that 474 level, I know it's trading below it this morning. That could this could generate a very large A to B equals CD to the downside. In the case of coffee. It's working on bar number eight today. It has a Rosemont Dominicator signal that's been triggered. If it generates a bullish reversal candle, then it will generate a Rosemont Dominicator bottom. Short of that, it could be a TD9 count bottom that forms between today and uh, Thursday out there. If you take a look at uh, sugar, sugar um, didn't really have a top. But price pulled back. It got back below the bottom of its profile. I don't have a good, clear read on sugar other than to share with you, at least as of this morning, it was consolidating with inside its profiles. In the case of uh, cocoa, which has had just simply an amazing run out here, uh, it formed a, a TD9 count top. It pulled back towards its uh, breakout level. It's likely rallying up to 3472. And if it can clear 3472, it's going to go attack its most recent highs out there. So that's what the uh, soft commodity is using Stevie's tools out there. This is the other chart, which has the different, which has profiles. Most of the times they're the same, but sometimes they're different. We use both out here. We use all the data that we can. And so I'll just simply leave you with this. Now we can see that Cocoa is actually trading above the top of a new daily profile. So so I, I don't recall where, because I, I closed that out, where that oscillator and change line was. But if it's above that, too, then what that's telling you, Mr. Bill, is it's headed back to those highs out there. So hope that helps you out. The coffee here, I know that's got a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Not a hammer candle just yet, but it could turn into a hammer candle at day's end. So, Mr. Bill, I hope that that gave the information that you were looking for. If it didn't and there's one specific grain that you need, let me know, and I'll do what I can to get you that information. Dan inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at um, uh, the uh, KRE out here. So let's go take a look at that. That is the uh, regional banking uh, ETF. And uh, right now you've got Carvana that's going to show up. And momentarily we'll switch that over and we should see the chart here for KRE. Now what Dan was interested in was the 30-minute chart. So let's pull that over here. He was interested in 30-minute profiles, I believe. Well, Dan, I got bad news for you. The profiles are way above price. Now maybe that's good news. I think you were short, if I'm not mistaken. So the profiles are way up at 47.51, 47.63, 47.87. What you're really focused on, I would say, on a 30-minute chart would be the uh, oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 46.31. That's the next resistance level on a move higher. Now, you know that that number is going to move up by pennies or what have you, so you have to use that um, as a guideline, if you will. Now, that's on the 30-minute basis. Now, the oscillator and change line is going to be wrong when I change this to a 15-minute chart or any profile. I'm just looking for some profiles that I can provide to Dan. There is a new profile that formed on a 10-minute basis. That 10-minute basis, the bottom and center are at the same price, I believe. The bottom and center are at uh, 4575, so that's a strong support level. But right now, 46 bucks even, Stephen. Price is trading above that on a 15-minute basis, and in five minutes, if price closes above that level, that would say a further rally is likely out there. So that's what the 15-minute, that's what the 30-minute charts look like. As long as we're here, let's go take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the uh, monthly. On a daily time frame, we can see that price, this formed a nice Rhodesman indicator top price is now back, is now below the bottom of its daily profile. So the next price target area for us has us looking at the weekly chart. And on a weekly chart, Dan, that level is down at the 43.58 area. Uh, live quote, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, perfect. So, uh, 
Uh, this is suggesting that it wants a lower price. And again, that price target, I would say, would be 4358 to 4157. And 4157 would be or should be the area where price, if this was just a counter trend move, would find support because it's a bullish, it's a bearish structured profile. And typically at the center is where counter trend rallies die, they end, and then they continue their move higher out there. So the KRE. Looks like it wants lower price. Dan, I hope that that helped you out as well. Uh, are there any other requests? I don't believe there are. Let me just check my phone out here. A lonely day for Steve-O. Just a few requests. Let's see if we've got anything. And the answer is we do not. So now Stevie's on his own. Um, let's take a look at what do we want to look at next? I'm going to flip back here just simply to the main. Chart. Well, you know, we didn't talk about the equity markets, so we really ought to do that. So that's what we're going to do when we come back from this break. We're going to take a look at the ES, the NQ. We'll take a look at the Russell 2000 as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome 
Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go take a look at the equity uh, futures marketplace. We've got the ES, the NQ, the Dow, the YM, and the uh, Russell 2000. So what we're taking a look at is today's going to complete TD9 count bottom patterns for the ES mini. The low of the pattern, whatever that is right now, it's bar number eight, and that low is at uh, 44.59. As long as price remains above that, does not close below it. So forget about remains, but does not close below it. You've got a TD9 count bottom. With price likely going to go target the 45.50 level, that is the top of its profile. A TD9 count bottom is also going to complete inside of the NQ today. It has a new profile that formed. Right now, the low of the pattern is yesterday's low. Let's assume that holds, and it closed below 15.02075 would negate that signal and suggest lower price. Otherwise, we should expect and anticipate that the NQ will rally up towards its oscillator and change line, which is really right near the top of its profile. So 15,551 becomes the price target. Whoops, sorry. I didn't do that. I actually meant to do that. Now, if we take a look at the Dow here, the Dow has a sell the D point pattern with price trading sideways. Yes, it's below profile, but it's really been trading sideways ever since that pattern formed out there. So it made and it's down to the bottom of the consolidation. While well, you've got a T the ES at a TD9 count bottom, the NQ at a TD9 count bottom. And today, bar number nine looks like you will complete for the uh, Russell 2000. So it's going to confirm that pattern today. It'll complete that pattern tomorrow. The pattern is taking it back to its breakout level of uh, 1906 out here. So you've got the Russell 2000. It's also generating a bottom signal. So that being the case, if it's going to bottom, what we certainly need to see is we need to see uh, signals coming from the intraday charts. Let's move to those intraday charts. Let's begin with the NQ. Let's start with any bottom patterns that we see out here. The bot first one comes from a 15 minute chart. This was a five bar morning star candle. So you've got a Rosemont to indicator bottom that is formed out here. Price should go target 15,228. That's the top of its 15 minute profile. The 30 minute chart is generated Rosemont to indicator bottom. We can see that the oscillator and change on has really acted as resistance. So two consecutive closes above it, and it right now is 15, we'll call it 15,182 probably a close above that level two consecutive bars are going to suggest a rally the next real key level of resistance for it would be up at the 15 259 level you take out 15 259 that tells you the rally extends today the uh, 60 minute chart has completed a td nine count bottom it did it as we came on the air at 11 uh, that should that tells us that price should also target its oscillator and change line that's at 15 213 we take a look at the uh, two-hour time frame chart. I don't have anything there other than price. A TD9 count top that took price back to support, which was its bullish structured profile area, 15,147. On a 240-minute chart, it's got a nice road momentum indicator bottom. Price pulled back and tested support. That's the oscillator and change line. The same is true with the five-hour time frame chart. Phew! So what Stevie just shared with you is that the NQ is bottoming. It's bottoming right here, right now. Well, maybe not right here, right now, but really not too long ago. If we take a look at that 15-minute time frame chart, is the bottom in? Look, what I can share with you is that bottom pattern, that TD9 count, is going to complete today. We could get a spike low, uh, lower than yesterday's low. That's always a possibility. But the intraday charts here right now are saying uh, sayonara. What we don't have, or I don't believe we have, in order for, let's go take a look. I'm going to change panels here so we don't screw this up. Give me a moment. We're going to go to a different screen just simply so we can take a look at the market breadth of data. So the first level, first area we're going to start is going to be on the 30-minute time frame. On the 30-minute time frame for the NASDAQ 100, we've got 32 above and 22 below. Remember, that NASDAQ 100 chart on the 30-minute time frame generated a road momentum indicator bottom. But also that oscillator and change line was a key level resistance. So if this market breadth is going to prove itself to us, it should take out that 15,182 level. If it does that, it suggests that first there's a small battle at 15,202 and the big battles at 15 259. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. We better for the NASDAQ if the S&P also had positive market breadth. It may not at this stage here, but let's take a look. I just don't know, but we're going to find out here momentarily. 130 above, 154 below. So still sellers that are in control of the 30 minute. We haven't taken a look at the 30 minute ES charts out there, but I do believe it's more about the NQ than it is about the ES, although they both need to be uh, traveling in concert. Let's take a look at the other time frames that we have out here. And those 
those other time frames are the 60, 240 daily and the weekly. Let's change over to the NASDAQ 100 right now, the NQ. What do we have on a 60-minute basis? So 60-minute, we've got bearish market breadth. 240, we've got bullish. On this 60-minute, it's 25 above, 44 below. Remember, we just completed that TD9 count bottom. Look, those bottoms, where it's a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom or TD9 count bottom, they're going to catch the bottom before market breadth turns. But we do need to see this market breadth turn as price approaches that 15,213 level and especially 15,259 because that's going to be the key battle today on any rally higher. Now, the 240-minute chart has positive market breadth. And that chart, that market breadth looks like this. This has got 28 above, 25 below. So it's by a smidgen. But remember, on that four-hour chart, price had pulled back, tested support. That was its oscillator and change line. So that was a bullish test out there. So actually, so market breadth is, is it's not all bullish across the board, but it's got a pretty good start with the 30 and the 240 being bullish and the 60 slightly, well, a little bit more than slightly bearish out there. Now, we didn't take a look at the ES Mini. Let me do that. Let me switch over here. Take a look at the S&P 500. And for the S&P 500, uh, we got market breadth data that says we are bullish on the six. Remember, we were bearish on the uh, we were bearish on the 30. We're basically a break even on the 60, as we can see. And the 240 slightly bearish with 146 above, 161 below. So let's go take a look at the ES mini charts. We'll change panels. We'll get over there. Give me a moment here. And uh, we'll change the panels. Then we'll actually, let me get this symbol going first before we change ES-23. So I get the machine working. And now we're going to go ahead and change screens out here. Give me a moment. And the e ES mini charts are just populated anyway. It's going to take just a bit because of everything that I've got running in the background. But what you'll see here on the ES mini, the daily chart is accurate. You've got that TD9 count bottom with the low coming in a couple of days ago. Uh, oh, actually, the low is today. Okay, we got a newer low today. So so far, if today's low, if we don't see a, if we don't see a move lower, then the key threshold level is going to be 44.5850. Price would need to close below that level in order to suggest that the TD9 count bottom has failed. I'm waiting for the other charts here to populate, but we can see the 30-minute chart, much like the uh, NQ formed a, a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. The 30-minute chart was a little bit slightly bearish, as I recall. Price should go target 44.84 and 44.87. Now, the cool thing about the 30-minute profile is if it's only a counter trend move in the ES Mini, then where price is going to find resistance is where, folks? At the center of that bullish structured profile. That price had closed below for more than two consecutive sessions on the rally this morning. Where did price stop? Remember, the body of the candle is the essence of price. And at both 9.30 and 10 o'clock this morning, 44.87 held. 44.87, what's called 44.87.75, let's just call it 44.88. If we get a close about 44.88, that's going to signal that there is a further rally coming with 45.01 being a likely price target. 10-minute, 15-minute chart. i to turn that off. We did. Uh, 10 minute and 15 minute charts have uh, you've got a you have bottoms along the bottom path here. 60 minutes got a TD9 count bottom. 30 minutes got a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. 15 minute, 10 minute. Uh, who somebody in the den was asking Stevie for trades out here. I, I can't provide you with more information than this with regard to what the market is communicating to us. If we take a look at the 240-minute uh, chart, it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. That bottom was tested here. That is held. You might even get another bullish reversal candle here. Do we need two Rhodes Mintum indicator bottoms for the four-hour time frame chart? We do not. And a five-hour chart, it's Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom held as well. I think the push lower for the day is done with. It's over. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow down uh, 249, SB's off 31, NASDAQ 185, the Russell's down 15. We're taking a look at the charts here for silver. Let me make sure we're on that page. We are. This is for Dizzle inside the Tiger's Den. So, Dizzle, let's start from um, what do you want to start? Let's start with the monthly chart. The monthly chart, month is not over, but price is back inside its profile levels. Once you get back inside a profile level, could be signaling to us wants to make a move to the next area. That would be 21.22. In the case of the weekly time frame chart, if a price closes below this level right here, this level is uh, 22.34. This would trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. That 18.93 area could become a target. But right now, price is just testing a prior swing point. Well, we've got price on the daily basis testing a prior roads momentum indicator bottom. That happened on June 23rd out there. You have a TD9 count bottom that formed yesterday. And as long as price does not close below that low, that low, by the way, is 22.41. We should see price bounce up to at least 23.22. You get above that, and then you've got a further rally with 24.57 being the price target. Now we get to the intraday charts. 30 minute from the beautiful rose momentum indicator bottom. Price ran right into resistance up here at its TD9 count breakout level. That was at two dollars and twenty-two dollars and seventy-three cents. Twenty-two seventy-three on the 60 minute was a TD9 count breakdown resistance level that held as resistance. If I was going to ask anybody out there, know where the key resistance level is for silver today? That's right. We would say 2273. We wouldn't know that if we didn't use the TD nine count system out here. If we look at the two hour time frame chart, price ran into resistance at the top of its bear structured profile area. That's between 2274 and 2276. So 2276 is going to be the key battleground. If price gets above that, the next battles are at the 2284 and 2299 level. You clear that, we're off to the races out there. Those are the charts for silver. They've got a bottom in place right now. Dizzle, you were looking for trades? It's there. It's an easy reward risk. Now, you got to close that trade out if you close below yesterday's low. That's how you would trade it. All right, let's close out silver. Let's go take a look at Lightspeed Crew. That was for John C. inside the Tiger's Den. We go take a look at Lightspeed Crew. Well, that's not the charts for Lightspeed Crew, but we'll get there. Here are the daily, weekly, monthly, and intraday charts for Lightspeed Crew. So right now, Lightspeed Crew is testing support. 
And support is that green oscillator and change line, right at about 80.55, where we're trading. The weekly had busted out of a consolidation pattern. Right now, price is testing the bottom of that consolidation pattern. If that holds, then the uh, uh, then that what that will tell us is the consolidation is real. Now, on a daily time frame, this formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It did that four days ago when it formed that bear sash candle. That was on August the 10th. And right now, price is trading below the bottom of its profile, 81.17. I would say, John, that a close below 81.17 would signal to you and I that price wants to make a pullback to 74.52. 74.52. The 30-minute chart may form by 12 noon, may form a TD nine count bottom. In order to do that, we need to see a spike below 80.40. Um, and if we, uh, well, you need to see a spike below 80.40 by 12.30 because the bottom could form on bar eight or on bar number uh the bar number nine or the bar following bar number nine out there so watch this through 12 30 out there i know what you're looking for is maybe to cover your short position out here i think you have to keep a keen eye on the 30 minute and the 60 minute charts which are are generating now the 60 minute chart is going to form a td nine count bottom as we get to that 12 noon hour but it's that hour afterwards that low can still take place uh, by uh, at 1 p.m. So you should get some type of a bounce out here. But the question is, is that just a counter trend move? So you've got those short term time frame charts to be watching and observing. Pay attention to those TD nine counts. You could take a snapshot of this right now on your screen. So you'd have that data if you don't follow that system out there, which you should follow the system because it's easy to figure out. And I teach that to you. So um, that's what I see when I take go get lights recruited again. 8117 is going to be the real important hurdle to be paying attention to. Of course, one day close below it doesn't make a change in trend, but a second day tomorrow would. That's why we're watching those intraday charts out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at oil out there. John C., I hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks for your request. The next request coming in from uh, Phil inside the Tiger's Den. Phil wants to take a look at Home Depot. So let's get over to those Home Depot charts, see what it is up to. And Home Depot right now trading out at about uh, 33049. Because uh, of what I've got open, I likely have a little bit of a, a delay out there. 33031 is the uh, last print. This is consolidated with inside its daily profile. It has a TD9 count top that has simply led to a consolidation, Phil. And that consolidation ranges between 327.23 and 334.97. That's the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count top. Now we can see that its oscillator and change line changed colors about four weeks ago. What that signals to you and I is price should pull back to that level. But that is not gonna happen unless we see two consecutive close below 327.23. And then if that happens, then we get a pull back to 316.69. That's a daily TD9 count breakout level. And then it also lines up with that weekly oscillator and change line. So you've got the top in place, but support is held. If we look at a week, a monthly time frame chart for Home Depot, uh, just a good old fashioned consolidation with inside of profiles. It's bullish right now. Price trading above that green oscillator and change line. So it's really going to be about the weekly and the daily chart out here. And first, I'd say to start with, you go with the daily. Now, of course, if this were to close above the TD9 count top on a weekly basis, that's 334.97. Then this is off to the races to the upside. So, Phil. I hope that provided you with the information that you were uh, looking for. And if not, just uh, ping me again, and we'll be happy to take a look at that. Uh, next chart is uh, for AMD. That's from the golf guy. And Michael W., I saw you resent me that uh, question. I forwarded an answer to you. I sent and responded an answer to you. So maybe check your junk mailbox because uh, your question has been answered. But let's go take a look at the golf guy's question. And uh, and the golf guy, oh, that's Duncan Steve inside the uh, Tiger's Den. We we'll take a look at AMD. Can you plug AMD into your system and see where it may be headed in say the next month or so? Well, right now what we've got is a, a consolidation pattern. So yesterday price pulled back almost to its breakout level. Didn't get all the way down there at 103.49. Uh, it has a TD9 count bottom that's been tested. That's a TD9 count bottom from June 27th. So the bottom's been holding. But right now what you're taking a look at is price testing this oscillator and change line. That's at the 112.40 level. Ideally, you'd see it close above that. If price does close above that, then that would signal move up to the top of the consolidation with inside the profiles. And that's at 119.41. So I would say the trading range out here is 119.41 at the highs 
And at the lows, I'd say it's down at the breakout level of 103.49. You can see that beautiful Rosemontum indicator top, TD9 count bottom out here, and just a sideways move. Now, that's the daily chart. Golf guy, on a weekly time frame chart, Price has lost its momentum. We know it's lost momentum because price is trading below that green oscillator and change line. So a lower downside target here would be 100.93. What was it on the daily? I should have just left that open. That was at 103.49. You're asking, what's this likely to do during the next month? At 112.41, where it's testing right now, that might release the information that we need to know. If we get a rejection here, then it says we probably head back lower and test either 109.91 or get back to yesterday's low or pre preferably the 103.49 level. On a monthly chart, beautiful TD9 count bottom, just like you had on the uh, weekly on the weekly chart. So monthly and weekly, you have those patterns out there. Price ran right into smack dab resistance. Where was that? The TD9 count breakdown level, right at 125.67. So in summary, what's AMD going to do for the next couple of months? Maybe it's just this sideways move out here. That's the best I've got for you. Duncan, Steve, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back to close out the show. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So right now, we'll take a look at this little present uh, for you. This is a, a market analyzer. This is one of the. Uh, this is a. This is a similar chart to what uh, subscribers uh, get. I certainly get them in the morning as well as in the uh, evening, Monday through Thursday. I I, I try to do at uh, most most nights. I do a uh, end of day report out there, and it covers uh, probably a, a couple, at least a hundred, hundred fifty. Uh, no. 
probably a couple hundred instruments that uh, provide you with data like this. So for example, what are we looking at? Right now I've got the index ETFs up here and you can see what uh, what the system that I use, what their current market outlooks are for the daily, weekly and the monthly time frame. What I want you really to focus on though right now is the top and bottom signals. Right now we're looking at bottom signals. So if we take a look at the uh, daily time frame. You can see that the SPY had a Rosemont indicator top out there and now that has led to a TD9 count bottom. I know it's a TD9 count bottom because I got a minus nine, bar number nine, and I've got a star. That star tells me that what it has done is it's met all the requirements. So we've got a TD9 count bottom that's going to complete today inside the SPY. The same thing for the Qs. In the Russell 2000, bar number nine is going to complete today or is likely going to complete today. So three of the four have got bottom patterns out there. Uh, if we take a look at uh, and you also what I've got out here, you can see the last TD9 count top. If it's got a star next to it, it tells you it's still active out there. Um, if we uh, So what other instruments? If we look at the sectors inside the S&P 500, well, the number one sector, the XLK, is going to complete its TD9 count bottom pattern today. Here I've got uh, resistance levels or price targets. You've got the oscillator and change line on a daily time frame. Uh, this tells you where price is likely to uh, head to out here. Just a, a plethora, a ton of information. Take a look at the material sector, the XLB. If you're looking for a trade, look at the XLB. That's going to complete a TD9 count bottom uh, today out here. What else? Uh, Tesla. Uh, is uh, is uh, completed a TD9 count bottom yesterday, so you got to take a look. Is price trading below that low? Meta, Facebook out here is going to uh, form a, a TD9 count should form a TD9 count bottom pattern today out there. And uh, don't worry about the uh, SLV because really it's uh, silver and gold itself, not the ETF. So that's how I'll leave it, folks, with a little present here. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back with you on a wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe.